Morning guys, today we're going to talk about trigonometric identities. Okay, so two functions f and g are said to be identically equal if f of x equals g of x for every value of x for which both functions are defined. Such an equation is referred to as an identity. An equation that is not an identity is called a conditional equation. Okay, so some identities you need to know. These are on your formula sheet. These, you need to memorize these. You should just know these off the top of your head. The tangent is equal to the sine over the cosine. Okay, and that's easily proved because remember that the tangent is the, um, the opposite over the adjacent, right? And the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now, when we divide fractions, we invert and multiply, so this is opposite over hypotenuse times hypotenuse over adjacent, and then those cancel, and I get opposite over adjacent, okay? Uh, this would be a great test question for you to prove. Okay, so you can do the same thing with cotangent is cosine over sine. Next one, cosecant is 1 over sine, which means that 1 over cosecant is also sine. Uh, secant is 1 over the cosine. Cotangent is 1 over the tangent. You need to know those. These are your um, Pythagoreans. Okay? This one critical that you know. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Uh, this one we use a lot also. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. And you can do variety, you can do uh, variations of these too. So for like this one. If I subtracted sine squared from both sides, both sides, cosine squared would equal um, 1 minus sine squared. That's the same thing. Uh, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So I could subtract 1 from both sides and have tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. This one, for some reason, you never, you hardly ever run into this, but it's, it's also true. Cotangent squared plus 1 is cosecant squared. Okay, then you get your even odd properties. Uh, these come in handy here. So uh, the sine of negative theta is equal to the negative sine of theta. So you can take this negative sine and move it out to the front. Same with cosecant. Actually, same with tangent and cotangent as well. Okay, now cosine is even easier. Cosine of negative theta is just cosine of positive theta. And the same with secant. Secant of negative theta is equal to secant of positive theta. Now, why does that work? Well, if you look at a graph of cosine, cosine looks like this. Okay. So if I go out here to some random theta, since it's symmetric to the y-axis, if I go out here to negative theta, those have the same value. So if I got a negative, I can just get rid of the negative because it's symmetric to the y-axis. These are even functions. These are odd functions. And these are odd functions. So if you look at sine, sine doesn't quite work like that. Uh, sine looks like this. Okay, so if I go out here to uh, sine of theta, I pick some random theta out here. Right here, there's theta. Okay, here's my value. If I put a negative on that, that just puts it down here, right? So the sine of negative theta, if I go over here, oops, not q theta, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's negative. So that would be the same as if I made it negative over here. And it works the same for these other ones. Okay, so simplify cotangent of theta over cosecant theta. So you're going to see a lot of problems like this. Um, so cosec uh, cotangent is the uh, cosine over the sine. And the cosecant is uh, 1 over the sine. So now we're dividing two fractions. That's the same as inverting the bottom one and multiplying. So this is the same as cosine theta over sine theta times sine theta over 1. And now since I have a sine on the bottom and a sine on the top, those cancel out. And this just becomes cosine of theta over 1, which is just cosine. So that simplifies to cosine. So if I took this and I set it equal to this, that would be a trig identity. All right, establish the identity. That means prove that this is true. So I've got to take this and I've got to turn it into that. Okay, well I do know that the cosecant is 1 over the sine. And I know that the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So that's equal. Now what I can do is I've got a sign on the top and a sign on the bottom. Those cancel out. So this is uh, 1 over the cosine, which is just the secant. So I've established the identity. I've proved that this is equal to that. All right, this one here, uh, sine squared of negative theta plus cosine squared of negative theta is 1. I've got to prove that. So I've got some steps to do here. The first thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to rewrite this as sine of negative theta squared, because that's what that means. And this right here is uh, cosine of negative theta squared. So this is the same thing as this. Now with this one, I've got a negative. I can pull that out in front. So this is negative sine theta squared plus uh, I can just make that one go away so this is just cosine of theta squared I've used my even odd properties here okay now if I take a negative and I square it it's just a positive so this is just uh, sine squared theta and this is just cosine squared theta. And the sine squared theta plus the cosine squared theta, we know from the Pythagorean, that's just 1. So I proved it. Okay, establish this identity, that the sine squared of negative theta minus the cosine squared of negative theta divided by the sine of negative theta minus the cosine of negative theta is the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta. Okay, so this part right here looks really similar to what we did back here. In fact, it is the same thing. But we're going to have to show our work, so we can't skip and just write that it's 1. Okay, so we will rewrite this as, uh, this is going to be sine of negative theta squared minus the cosine of negative theta 
squared all over, I can pull the negative out here, this is negative sine theta, uh, minus, and I can make that negative go away, cosine theta. Okay, next step. I can take this negative out in front. And uh, I can make that negative sign go away. And we'll just rewrite this because I didn't do anything to that. Okay, next I can square this and this becomes positive. Minus uh, this is cosine squared. And this is negative sine theta minus cosine theta. Okay, now be careful because a lot of people will, hey, that's one right there, but it's not one because it's minus, it's not plus. Okay, so what do we do with this? Well, this is a difference of two perfect squares. That's a perfect square, that's a perfect square. So if you remember your, perfect, your difference of two perfect squares, a squared minus b squared factors to a minus b times a plus b. So this will become, let's try that again, this will become sine theta minus cosine theta times sine theta plus uh, cosine theta. All over, uh, Okay, I'm going to factor out the negative 1 here, and that leaves sine theta plus cosine theta. Okay, now what I can do is I can cancel this with this, and I've got sine theta minus cosine theta over negative 1. So this becomes... Uh, negative sine theta plus cosine theta. All right, now I had cosine minus sine. That's the same thing as here. I can just rewrite it backwards. So this is cosine theta minus sine theta. That's the same thing. And I've now established my identity. So a lot of the issues in this one was uh, just making sure that you dealt with all the negatives Okay. All right, establish the identity. One plus tangent uh, over one plus cotangent is just the tangent. Okay. So we got to do a little bit of uh, algebra here. Uh, we're going to take this and we're going to change this to sine over cosine. So 1 plus sine over cosine over, this is 1 plus cosine over sine. Now, um, I would really like to condense this, so I need a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by cosine over cosine, which just has a value of 1 and doesn't change the value here. And this one I'm going to multiply by sine over sine for the same reason. Okay, so this becomes uh, cosine uh, over cosine plus sine over cosine over sine over sine plus cosine over sine. 
Now I've got common denominators in both the numerator and the denominator, so I can combine those things. So this will become cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta. And the bottom becomes sine theta plus cosine theta over sine theta. Now again, remember, I'm, I'm dividing two fractions here, so I can invert and multiply. So this is going to be cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta times sine theta plus cosine theta. Oops, sorry, I forgot to invert. Uh, this would be sine theta over uh, sine theta plus cosine theta. Okay, since I'm multiplying these together, um, this can cancel this. And I now get sine over cosine, which we all know is tangent. And so all this boiled down to just tangent. Beautiful stuff. You can't see beautiful art like this in, in uh, art class. You only see this in math class. Okay, establish this identity here. That sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta plus 1 plus cosine theta over sine theta is just 2 cosecant theta. Okay, so it would be really nice if we could get a common denominator and add these two things together. So if I was going to do that, I would take um, this one and multiply it by sine theta over sine theta. And I would take this and multiply it by 1 plus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. So what do I get when I do this? I get sine times sine is sine squared. Okay. Uh, on the bottom of this whole thing, I'm going to get uh, sine times 1 plus cosine. So there's my common denominator. Over here, I've got 1 plus cosine times 1 plus cosine. Uh, I have to FOIL that. So this is going to be, uh, uh, first is be 1 times 1 is 1. Outside is going to be uh, uh, 1 times cosine is cosine, and the inside is 1 plus or times cosine, so that's plus 2 cosine theta, plus the last would be cosine times cosine would be cosine squared. Okay, now check this out. I got a sine squared plus a cosine squared right here. That's just one. So that's one plus another one. That's two plus two cosine theta all over uh, sine theta times one plus cosine theta. Alright, the next thing I can do is I've got a 2 here and a 2 here. I'm going to factor that 2 out. That leaves me with 1 plus cosine theta on the top. And it leaves me with my sine times 1 plus cosine on the bottom. And now those will cancel. And I get 2 over sine, which 2 over sine is just uh, 2 cosecant. 
and that's what we wanted to show that it was. It's a good idea every step or so, every step or two, to go back and look at what you want to turn this into to make sure you're kind of on the path to do that. Because it's very easy on some of these to go down a rabbit hole and end up lost in the woods someplace. And uh, if you're not paying attention to where you're trying to get to, you can end up lost. Okay, establish an identity. Tangent theta plus cotangent theta over secant theta times cosecant theta is one. All right, so here's what I would probably do with all these. There's a lot of, I could turn all of these things into sines and cosines. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do. So this would be sine over cosine. And this would be cosine over sine. This would be one over cosine. That'd be one over sine. have an addition problem here in the numerator so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a um, common denominator so that I can uh, combine that so I'm going to take this and multiply this by sine over sine and this one by cosine over cosine okay so what do I get now Sine squared plus cosine squared over sine cosine over uh, one over sine cosine. Alright, again, I'm dividing, so that's the same as inverting and multiplying. Plus, this is 1, so this is 1 over sine cosine times sine cosine over 1. Well, hey, check this out. Sine cancels the sine, cosine cancels the cosine. What's left? Just 1. It's one. That was fun. Turn something very complicated into something extremely simple. Okay, establish the identity that one minus the sine of theta over cosine theta is the same as cosine theta over one plus the sine of theta. Okay. Um, here's what we're going to do with this. Um, I'm going to take the top of this thing, 1 minus sine theta. I'm going to multiply this by um, 1 plus sine over one plus sum. Okay, this is just a value of one, so I don't change the value here, but it's gonna look different. So this is going to become, if I FOIL this, this is gonna be one, one times one is one. Outside is sine, inside is negative sine, so that cancels out. Last is negative sine squared over this is cosine times 1 plus sine. Now, why did I do that? Well, I got a 1 plus sine in the denominator now, and that's kind of what I wanted, right? So, now I just got to get rid of this stuff. I got to change this to a cosine and get rid of that. All right, so let's take a look at this. This kind of sounds familiar. Remember from your 
your trig functions that sine squared plus cosine squared is one. And I said, you know what? You can um, you can have uh, variations on that. Like I could subtract sine squared from both sides of this and get cosine squared is equal to uh, one minus sine squared, and that lets me take one minus sine squared and replace that with cosine squared. Oh, now check this out. I got, I got two cosines on the top and I've got one on the bottom. I can cancel that with one of those. And now I've got a, one cosine on the top and I've got one plus sine on the bottom. And that's what I wanted to prove right there. That was equal to cosine plus, uh, over one plus sine. Okay, so we've done a bunch of those. We had a couple different techniques. What were the techniques we had? Well, uh, we used the fact that, uh, that uh, we used the difference of two perfect squares here. The fact that uh, a squared plus b squared, or I'm sorry, a squared minus b squared equals uh, uh, a minus b times a plus b. We use that. We use common denominators. We've got common denominators. We took uh, addition and we converted it into just uh, division um, because we got common denominators and combined things, and then we could cancel. Okay. Uh, again, a common denominator. We had several different techniques here where we found common denominators. In fact, that was probably the biggest thing that we did in this whole entire lesson. So, I've got a few uh, problems for you to do here. A lot of established the identity, so, uh, or prove the identity. All right, show that the cosecant times the cosine is the cotangent. So, make sure you show all your work, and I will see you in class next time, folks.